No, um, just really looking forward to this week. It's a game against Utah State and um, a rivalry game that we're looking forward to and, and missed last year. So I'm um, happy that we can get this game going and uh, had some really cool um, interactions with, with Blake. Uh, and I, I see what he's doing as a head coach and, and the way he's getting his players to play. They've, they've added some new faces to the roster, but I uh, see a lot of familiar ones as well. So they've uh, been impressed with what I've seen on film and the way they play the game. And, and they have a lot of explosive athletes, um, have a lot of respect for the fan base too. So it'll be, it'll be a fun game to go up there, up in Logan and, and uh, on a Friday night and um, looking forward to the game. But um, you know, we'll, we'll see how our prep goes this week. Uh, we're shorter day, just like they are. So uh, we'll have to. This is a new one for the season, but uh, everyone will have to make adjustments, and we'll have to just get ready with a, a day less of prep. Okay, thanks, Coach Jared. Ronnie, what did you learn as you went over the film, particularly about the defense? You talked about it after the game, but what did you learn about uh, about the defense? What needs to to change moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I was really, you know, I think a lot of guys were disappointed after the game. Um, just wanted to have better results, especially on the defensive side in the second half. And after watching the film, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. Um, even though there were a lot of mistakes made, uh, I was really excited because the effort and the energy was there. And I, I saw a lot of guys just pressing, trying to do too much. And when, when, when the moment was uh, we came their way. There's certain guys made mistakes, but it's it's a very fixable thing. So I, I'm I'm excited to get get to work today and get to practice and and get those things fixed. And everyone just has to do their 111th, and the the big play will come their way uh, when it's within their assignment and their technique. And so uh, I saw a lot of guys pressing, a lot of guys trying to be trying to make plays, and that that's because they care so much. But I think they just need to be a little bit more disciplined. In their assignments, and um, and uh, you know we can always improve with our technique. That could always get better, and and focusing on the fundamentals of the game. But I saw a lot of guys really trying hard, um, and probably a little trying to do everyone's job rather than just doing their their one eleventh. And so we can focus on that, um, be a little bit more disciplined within our assignments. I I, I feel really comfortable with with uh, us being in a better position for for more success. Also wanted to ask, of course, for an injury update. You had a bunch of guys banged up, and I know you guys go over that. So, just any updates you can give us there? Yeah. Uh, as for now, nothing um, uh, done. No, nothing out for this. No one out for the season. So, we're still evaluating some some injuries. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll add some guys that that didn't practice uh, that could have gone in the game last week, but didn't practice as much. And I'm not gonna play a guy in the game if, if they didn't really have a lot of practice time. And so we'll add um, those guys to today. They'll be able to practice and participate and, and get ready for that Utah State game on Friday. Um, other than that, I think only one that would be highly doubtful is Caleb Christensen, and which is sad because he's, he's from that area and, and uh, I was looking forward to going back home So and, and performing in front of his family and friends out there. but. Uh, that's the only one that's highly doubtful for now. Okay, Mitch, we'll have you go next, and then uh, Jay Drew. Yeah, Kalani, from your uh, film study over the weekend after the game, uh, you, know, you had to dig into the depth due to some of those injuries. Who were some of the players that uh, you were impressed with uh, their performances stepping in and in a moment's notice? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot of good things I saw from from so many different people, um, but we we still improve. We can we. <laughs> I don't know if I can name one person that did a, a lot of things right, but you probably know the names. I thought Pepe Tanovaso did some good things. Um, you know, uh, Gabe Summers is always a guy we can rely on, and, and so there's a lot of guys that stepped up. Um, Earl uh, Tuyoti Mariner is another one. Um, I'm looking at the D line because that's where we were, we were missing um, Batty and missing uh, um, Nysa. So I thought Caden Haas did a great job up front. And, um, you know, I think we put Zoe down there at the nose part a little bit. So we, we have a lot of guys that we can move around. And, um, you know, it's nice to have depth, but, but we, want, we want our 
we want we want all our guys to be able to participate. So hopefully this week, I know we'll be deeper and we'll have more guys that, that can contribute. That's what we're looking forward to getting that done. But uh, those are some of the guys that come to mind. I think we had some some safety step up and we moved Chaz around a little bit. And so Ammon Hanneman came in, made some plays, and and it was good to see George Udo get some reps too, uh, coming back from his injury. So we've added some depth in some places, but. Uh, hopefully we can add some more with, with guys returning back to the field. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, looking at headed this week against Utah State, I, I think this is the only trophy game the program plays annually. Do you have the, the wagon wheel prominently displayed around the football offices for players to see to, to buy into you know, the annual rivalry each year? Yeah, we, we have the wagon wheel here, so I, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we got the beehive boot or anything like that, but um, we're just gonna go play the game. I don't. I don't that wagon wheel's heavy, man. I'm not. I'm not really. But at least you can roll it. But I, I don't know. I just want to get the guys to play the game. And right now, I'm focused on them being assignment sound rather than than worrying about what trophy we get after. Well, honey, I, I wonder if you can give us the Keenan Ellis update. Just due to the kind of unusual circumstances with him and his injury. Yeah, we're we're still hopeful. I mean, it's it's a it's a day to day type of deal for for him. Um, he's doing better. He's he's present. He's he's at practices and he's at the games. And and so we're still in the same situation now where we're not sure if he's going to be able to be available this weekend. Um, but. Um, probably find out in the next couple of days if he can participate. I, I just. I have a hard time playing a, a player if, if they, they haven't really had enough practices under under the belt to, to go into a game. Then I wanted to ask you about the offensive line. Uh, Joe Tukulov, who I think got a start, uh, and then Harris Lachance went out. Just how do you feel like they've performed in, uh, this season based on the expectations? Yeah, I thought they did some good things. I, I thought uh, Joe came in, did some good things uh, at, at guard. and. You know, he and, and Connor Pay have had, had kind of a little bit of rotation there. Um, we, we saw Campbell Barrington come in, in and, and uh, fill in for Harris when Harris was, was banged up. And then, you know, we were expecting Harris to, to make a recovery and, and, and be with us this week. But uh, it's nice to know that we can count on some of those guys to be in there. And I know um, Coach Funk is working on on the depth and he's trying to get, get guys developed as quickly as possible. There's some young guys that we were really excited about, but um, you know we're still it's still a work in progress. So uh, in the meantime, we're, we're really thankful for the guys that are that are out there that are playing that have some experience, and hopefully just keep developing these guys as we go along. There's a lot of promising young O linemen that we're really liking, even on on our scout team and stuff. They're giving us a great look, and uh, I have, have to say we're pretty deep there. We're just very young. Okay, let's go to uh, Jared Lloyd and then Mitch after that. Bonnie, I wanted to ask a technique question. I talked to Pepe about it after the game, and it seemed like guys a lot of times would take some bad angles and end up just lunging and, and missing tackles in the game. How do you address that technique-wise so they're taking the right angles, being in the right spots? What, what needs to happen there? Well, probably just need to realize that you're going against a really good quarterback that can run. Uh, those athletic quarterbacks, I, I'm sure... Uh, I don't know how many times you can practice that in, in a game other than taking the fast guy that can run around and beat you in angles. And so uh, I think I think I'm looking at all, all the players that do it. Michael Vick did that a lot to a lot of people. Steve Young did it. Um, Kyler Murray did it. And so I think this this uh, young man from South Florida, Clinkett, is a really good player. He's <laughs> just he's a, he's a lot quicker and faster than people think. And so. That's that's part of it, but the other part is we're taking better angles. But it's not like the angles were in question, you know, the weeks before. So we just got to keep working on it and being a little bit more um, aware of the type of athlete that we're going against. And then, you know, we're, we're going to be tested again with Utah State. They have they have a couple of really co uh, athletic quarterbacks. So um, and they've shown that they can create um, on, on their on their legs as well. So hopefully we'll learn something from. Uh, last weekend to, to this weekend. Uh, Kalani, uh, just one since no one's asked you yet, uh, what's the uh, uh, the likelihood Jaron's available to play this week? 
Yeah, I think Jaron will be available. We'll, we'll see how it goes in practice. That's that's. Uh, we, we work off of what we can get in practice and then make it the final decision when we get closer to game time. And so regardless of the position, uh, if a guy is able to practice, then we have to go with who we think um, will give us the best opportunity to, to, to win and also what's right by the players. And so we have guys that are always competing and, and definitely uh, trying to find um, reps on the field. And so that, that happens in practice. And so he'll be, he'll be practicing today. If, if that helps your your question, thanks. Uh, and then one one last thing for me, uh, you know, you, you, in, with Independence, you guys face so many different type of schemes and styles. Uh, is from what Blake Anderson does with Utah State early on, is there maybe a, a team that when you see them on film that they kind of remind you of, with their schematics or what they do uh, on the field that you can draw some maybe parallels to? Yeah, I mean, they they can do a lot of different things. That's the thing is. is um, you know, you look at, at, at Blake's past and then where he's been and what he's done as a coach, and, and I think they could do a lot of different things. From what we're seeing right now, it's, it's um, very similar to what, what we could see with UCF um, and some other programs. But I, I think they can do a lot of different things, too. They do a little bit of QB run game. Um, you know, they, they have two quarterbacks that – they give them unique skill skill set, and so you have to be ready for both of them. But uh, I, I've been really impressed with how they how they they utilize their their talents and their and their strengths. I think they have a physical big O line and backs that can really you know run the ball downhill and can create in space. And then they have some really athletic, explosive athletes at wide out and at tight end. So it's it's a it's a difficult matchup. Um, I mean, obviously, look at the stats. They they've. Uh, They've gotten. They've been able to gain many yards and, and and have a lot of explosive plays against some really good teams, and um, I think last week was a little different where they weren't able to capitalize on it. But you look at the yards and and how they've been able to move. I think that's probably you know listening to to what they they they're talking about. That's not their normal offense, and so I think they're looking to get back to their normal offense. We're looking to get back to our normal defense and. It'd be a good matchup, and then their defense—they have tons of pressure. They, they do a lot of really good things on defense. They're sound. They tackle well, and so it'd be a good matchup. I, I think. I think uh, overall, um, in all three phases, us against them is going to be—it's going to be a good, good matchup and a good game. Looking forward to it. Thank you. We've got time for a few more questions. Let's go with Jackson, then Jake, then Sean. Hey, Coach. Obviously, you've been without Jake Oldroyd three of the four games this season. We were just hoping for an update on him, and then also your thoughts on Justin Smith and his performance this year filling in so far. Yeah, Jake's. Uh, we're still working to see if he can get healthy. That's that's the main thing. And um, you know, as we work closer to it, we we have someone like Justin that we can recount on that we can count on, and we have also um, you know Justin Smith working on our kicking game. We have. Cash Peterman, that's also there, that's working on his kicking game as well. So, uh, our guys, uh, you know, I'm thankful that that um, Ed and Gavin have gotten our our, our uh, special teams in order, and we feel good about our, our snappers and our holders. So, uh, I feel like we have a really good punter, and um, we're just going to keep working with it. it. It's it's injuries are difficult, you know. So we're hoping to get Jake back as soon as possible. In the meantime, Justin has done a good job. Filling in um, this last game, and I didn't really like the low kick on the field goal that was blocked. But uh, nobody was perfect, and we're, we're looking to get better. I, I, I've seen him kick better than that, and um, give him we'll give him another chance. And if Jake's not able to go, Kalani, <clears throat> excuse me. When it comes to defending a system that plays two different quarterbacks, how difficult is that for you to prepare your guys to face two different styles? Well, the styles are different, but both can do what the – I mean, I think they, they both throw the ball well and they both can run. So it's, 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 uh, it's not like the identity all of a sudden shifts and changes. I think both can make plays. What I've been re impressed with is that they, they – um, both teams, uh, both quarterbacks can and can lead a comeback. And though they've been down before, and they've been able to fight back in the games, and um, so you, when you watch the film, it's not like one does one thing only and the other does the other. They they both can run, they both can 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 throw. So 
and then you surround them with some really good talent on on in their in their skill positions in the physical line. I I think they're they look really good. I I, I like what I see when I'm watching them on film. So we we know it's it's a difficult matchup, and man, we're just we're we're, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, Coach, I, I can't believe we've gone this long without talking about the fact that uh, this is your first true road game of the year. You touched on it a little bit, obviously not leaving the state of Utah still. And I would argue this is your first actual road game as well with how that crowd was down in Las Vegas. Just what are you guys doing to kind of prepare for a, a true road environment? And obviously, you know how hostile Utah State fans can be and kind of the atmosphere that they create up there. Are you guys doing anything different in, in practice this week to kind of simulate that and prepare for it? Because it has been a while since you faced a, a true road crowd, like the one you'll see probably on Friday night. Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with some noise stuff. I mean, that's everybody does that. And we'll work we'll work on our uh, on communicating. And, and um, but I, I don't think it's uh, anything that you really focus on too much. That's part of playing football is that you play on the road sometimes and we we have some guys that played on the road and we have some guys that on our team that are new to it so it'd be a really cool experience for all for all of those guys and for all of the coaches so I um, we have a lot of respect for Utah State and their fan base and their, their student section I understand they put in our bench in front of the student section so it'll be it'll be a lot of fun I um, you know we, we, we would like to feed off of the energy in every arena that we play in and so even if it's some negative energy it's energy all the same so we're gonna do our best to play the game and have fun with it and and appreciate the fact that we get to play college football with fans whether they're ours or not you know we'll, we'll have representation there I'm pretty sure of it and um, but you know at the same time we, we, we look forward to the to the matchup and the, the difficulty of being in 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 another uh, team stadium so that, that that's the fun part of the game.